Welcome to Spain and to Puerto Sherry. Where eight top international teams will race ten full-on races on fast, very fast TP52 monohulls. It's the second event on the five regatta 2019-52 Super Series. We have an amazing different venue, the Bay of Cadiz, where race conditions will test teamwork to the limit, tactics, sailing skills and speed. It's the 52 Super Series and day three of racing from Puerto Sherry. Well, it is, in, it is indeed day three, and welcome to day three of the Royal Cup. We're racing for the Royal Cup this week. I'm joined in the studio by Guy Barron from the uh, Prevetsa, and uh, we've had a couple of days racing, good racing in sea breeze conditions. Let's have a look back. Well, after a short delay, race one of the Royal Cup gets away in eight knots of breeze. Wind axis is 225 degrees. Prevets and Brennanasek start well on the pin end of the line. The left side is strong up the first beat. Four boats go left, four go right. And at the top mark, it's Prevetsa leading with Brennanasek second, Allegra third. At the leeward gate, Allegra go to the right and make an early gain and get through to finish second. So the winner is Prevetsa second, Allegra. Third is Platoon getting up from fifth to third. And fourth is Brunanasek. So race two, slightly more breeze in the start line, about nine to 10 knots. Breeze has moved slightly to the left. Azura get a good start off the line, leading from the left and uh, get round to the top mark first. Sled also good off the line, get round second. Allegri are over the start line, have to recross and that really pretty much is the end of their hopes in that race. So Azura extend through the lead, Sled are second through the finish line, Bernina second, third. So the leaders after day one are Prevetsa with Azura in second. A little bit more breeze uh, for race three, 12 to 14 knots through the race. This time the right side pays upwind at the top market Sled and Quantum Racing with Azura. Then at the gate, the boats split. Quantum Racing go to the left hand mark, Sled to the right hand mark looking upwind. And at the top mark, Quantum Racing are leading. Azura get up to second and Sled third, so Azura take the overall lead in the regatta. Second race of the day, well, there's actually more breeze than we've seen so far at the regatta, up to 15 knots. Nice start from Platoon. Look at that. Really conservative out on the right. And then you have that little three, group of three in the middle, Sled, Platoon, uh, and. Uh, Allegra all close. It was interesting yesterday and in a couple of the races how we've seen two groups of four forming up. Yeah. yeah. So it's also I think I think it's pretty much a case that whoever's led and most of the time that whoever's led at the windward mark is has won, although I think there's a couple of exceptions to that, but Yeah, they can sail clean and everybody else then tends to mix themselves up a bit. I think there's a lot to be said about the pressure out there. Um, yesterday, for sure, we were having difficulty downwind, just sort of trying to pick that mode. It was yeah. between the hitched up and going and the, the lighter air, air mode. And I think, again, on this beat, you know, it seems like, you know, how have these people got the advantage? It's been it's right. Pressure, isn't it? It's pressure, isn't it? Finding that bit of pressure and going, making the best of it, and then being able to attack when you want to. I mean, it's, it's flipping between the left and the right all the time. We're now seeing yeah. Renan a sec at the top of the table with by about 50 metres and uh, over on that right side Prevetsa and by the looks of things Quantum and Phoenix just having a little tussle. Jenny are you back with us? We are yes yeah, so we've buttered up to the to the top marks now so I uh, haven't actually been able to hear what you guys have been talking about or who's leading from which is at the top it kind of looks like a pretty even race course at the moment. Yeah, it does. We were just saying it is really between the left and the right. The best on the right is Prevetsa. The best on the left is uh, Brunenasek. And they're very, very even. The advantage is just flipping between the two. Just now it's uh, Brunenasek. But I think that Prevetsa are probably going to have the uh, starboard tack advantage coming in. You have Quantum behind them. But it's hard to believe that, you know, looking at the virtual the between Prevetsa and Quantum, you can get seven boats in. <laughs> yeah. Well, and hopefully just stood up a, bit, a little bit above that ley line if that um, virtual ley line's right, so we can come in with a bit of speed and deal with... I think that's what those dead stops are, yeah. yeah. 
a little bit of chop on the water, Jenny. There is. There is some chop. As I said earlier, it kind of looks windier as you look upwind than it really is in reality. And I think that's just because that's the nature of this. We're now out on the Atlantic Ocean. This is a new venue to the 52 Super Series, the Bay of Cadiz. And there's kind of not much between here and, and America to stop these waves. So while it's really only about 11, 12 knots uh, of wind, the water looks much, at times, looks much bigger than that and better than that. And so the chop is something that the sailors are having to deal with and to set up for and to think about in terms of driving and in terms of um, the technique of the sail trim in general. But they've had a couple of days of, of racing already and they're, they're well familiar with these sorts of conditions. It's much like Cascais, which is a venue that the 52 Super Series goes to a lot. But here we go now, the boats are getting towards the starboard end of this top mark. And it looks like as they're coming across Platoon, yeah, didn't go so well on the left side. They did get ping pong around a little bit, though, so um, Platoon just taking in. Should Andy and Guy will be when Brennanisek comes across it. At the moment, it looks like they have the position. What do you think, Guy? Looks quite good for uh, Provetsa. We're just waiting to uh, see Brennanisek coming in from the uh, left. But it... Yeah, I think Brennanisek might have it, unfortunately. Here they come in, yeah. and they're just going to tap on the bow or just in front of uh, Provetsa. So yeah, I think like the early lead for uh, Brunenese, Jenny. Yeah, they're quite well clear. The great images then, a nice tack from Brunenese just under the bow of uh, Provetsa. Chimi Fontella, the uh, 470 world champion, 470 Olympic medalist and 49er world champion, is on the helm most of the time, we believe, on the uh, Brunesec. And doing a pretty good job by the looks of things. So, Jenny, just take us around this mark if you can hear us. Just in front, uh, as you guys were saying, Fontella. So a talent. I mean, I him last year at the ISAF Worlds, step into Niner for the first time championships of a Niner for the first time ring with his brother. They won the Worlds as you just, for 70 world champions. To see him step into a fleet like this, his first time to the TPT2s, first only one to see Bissek be second board overall with the 4-3-4-3 three, three, and then to be coming around the top mark with him here, I mean, I think this is good. Up owner and Vladimir who dives sometimes as well. So just looking at the, yeah, Allegri coming around the mark uh, beside Azura. And in the end, I think uh, Quantum coming in sixth, I think. They looked quite good early, early in the lineup, Guy. What do you think happened? Yeah, they did like to think they got camped on by quite a few boats um, and were to leave, leave one of them. Just having to shoot that mark a little bit there. So they won't have so much speed, so they're now going to get rolled by Phoenix. And, um, and Allegri had a good start. Yeah, had a great coming start. Eighth. Yeah. You know, it's, there's so little in it. But uh, Brenna said, get the early jump. Yeah, I'm not sure that, that's perfect. So there we go. Just, it's supposed to be a hot, hard stopping moment. Exactly, yeah. I was going to say that's just attached to your heart monitor. <laughs> well, it would normally mean there's the uh, gear breakdown when <laughs> that sort of thing would happen. Yeah, yeah. Expect my phone to stop buzzing in my pocket. Anyway, so Brennan Sack then leading the newest boat in the fleet, launched just in uh, March or April, I think. Shimi Fantella on the helm, Morgan Larson calling tactics. Morgan, of course, a well-known face in this fleet guy. He's, uh, he's been in a few different boats over the years, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. Yeah, I think he might have even had a go on patches back in the days when I used to sail. And, uh, oh, did he? Yeah. Um, yeah, but he was, he's been on Berlin yeah. site before. He's done some time in Quantum. He was on RAN at different times. Well, like you said, all the top guys are here. And, you know. Yeah, yeah he's been in lots of different boats. Interesting, no jive sets today. Yeah, it's a, he's a 
incredibly quiet and calm on the boat. I think very, uh, he's just exactly as you see him on land. Chilled out. Totally chilled out, and I think that's why he works in this boat in particular. And Chimi's the same. Yeah, and they've got some good experience there on board with uh, Simon. Simon Dobbin, yeah. 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 They'll be quietening it all down and giving plenty of confidence to everybody. So the two uh, Vrolic boats, second and third guy. Just slow, soaking down a little bit as well, isn't it? it was, yeah. It's uh, a great result of the last uh, regatta to have of Vrolic's one and two. Yeah, certainly um, kept the Vrolic office happy. Sure, especially when there's been so much domination of the, the boatines. boatines. Yeah. Yeah. So what did you put that? Was there anything that they had in terms of performance or was it circumstantial or was it largely down to your hard work? <laughs> yeah, definitely my hard work. I think both, both of us made our boats slightly differently. Yeah. And was everybody, I think everybody changed the fin or bulb. Most of the boating has changed the bulb. You changed Rudders, your fin. Yeah, we changed our fin and we sloped it back a bit, moving the weight a little bit further off, bow out a little bit. We Both of us have shift the rudder back 150, 250 mil. <laughs> and it's helped... Uh, I have to laugh because I was talking to the Vrolic officer the other day and they wouldn't tell me how far it Oh, sorry. <laughs> to sorry, Tobias. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Sorry, Tobias, if you're listening. I knew you'd tell me that anyway. Should have just phoned you. Well, that's interesting stuff, isn't it? It's it, what's uh, interesting to see, you know, what ha differences we all have made. And but you, you changed the, the, you were, both the Vrolic boats changed the fins, didn't you? Is there any change in the actual plan form or the Yeah, the thickness? fins, yeah. Well, I better keep my mouth shut now, I think. No, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's a diff little bit smaller. Yeah. A um, little bit less weighted surface. So there's a nice yeah. shot of the third grinder, third, third pedestal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you want to close up. They didn't think about that one. Great advert for Harkin. Yeah, and, and, and quite light. I guess everybody's yeah. forward here, aren't they? And showing that the pedestal's not that much good. Everybody at Prevetsa and Bronise having a jibe. So much of this, is Andy's about the confidence, you know, and the changes that we've Absolutely, made. Absolutely, yeah. And then having that practice session, all the boats coming together, and you know, you could see the sort of nervousness of the design teams and the, and the technical guys um, as to whether they'd made the right change over the winter. And I'm sure a few people went away and made a few changes that they haven't said. It was a nice atmosphere in Valencia, wasn't there? It was. Oh, it was great. Yeah. Going, like going back to school early. Yeah. And, you know, the teams really need it to get out there and get the confidence and get your head back in the boat. It's, it's all so tight. It's just to make sure you didn't get any holidays as well. Yeah. <laughs> Keep me out of England. Keep me away from my house. Exactly. Your tax resident status. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, but as I say, going very nicely there. I'm just talking about the uh, confidence. There you can see Jimmy Fontella on the helm. I mean, interesting that Vladimir's given up the helm, if you like, to uh, in order to learn from uh, one of the top guys. Yeah, I guess it's a tough fleet to, to just jump on board and, and learn, you know, see how it goes, see how the boat's going, get the confidence in the boat, maybe he'll take the helm back again. I think I'm pretty sure he will. It, you know, that's definitely making it look, not, look easy at the moment. And he's looking at the team and the sailors there, you know, they're not really rolling the boat in and out, so they must have fairly good pressure and yeah. have it on a good edge and going well. So Quantum in sixth for the moment. I thought Phoenix was going to catch up a little bit but they're still down in seventh. should still be to the good of Azura in the overall standings. I think, well, no, actually, Brennanasek will overtake them. And hopefully we'll climb a bit. It's far too early to start talking about that, Andy. The <laughs> <laughs> platoon got a nice lane down there, seeming to manage to soak down a little bit on uh, the lower than Pavetz and Brennanasek for the moment. We've seen the right work a couple of times on uh, runs yesterday. We saw 
Azura in the first run, second race, gaining downwind, and then Brunenisek, if you remember, in the second race, got up from fifth to third, I think it was, on one run. But I think so much of it is about the phase of the breeze and the pressure that comes down. Yeah, obviously there's a bit of tide here, um, something that the teams will take into consideration, but with the... Up to half a knot, I think. Yeah, but with the boat so tight, you know, obviously they feel that there's, there's no advantage to one side or the other. In terms of learning the tide, how do you, how do, you do that? You, some teams are out, you know, over the weekend and before the weekend going out and taking tide readings. Is that your job? Or? Yeah, lunch, launch the chase boat a bit earlier and the navigator comes in, they go out and take a look at it, talking to the locals, and then every day we, everybody's got a tide stick that they go and drop in the water and monitor where it is a minute later. And do you share with other teams? Uh, not that information, no. <laughs> And we have the training part yeah, yeah. at, at Azura, which we go upwind with. Um, and boat speed test. You don't, you don't debrief with them? No, we don't, no. Yeah, the other well, qu quantum teams do. They go all together and share the information. Yeah, yeah. And the teams. I think there's a certain amount of quiet. Indeed, so we're on board there. With uh, Platoon. Yeah, John looking. Is that what's the trimming there? The bank, I doubt it. So light. See him work working there with uh, Jordi Calafat on his left. Jordi doing the big picture stuff. Very, very close then, I think. Just where you think the pressure is, isn't it? I think yeah. That's what John's looking out for there, isn't it? Just trying to make sure that he knows where the best breeze is. And again, to start thinking about exiting, exiting this bottom mark, where, where you, you want to be. Yeah, where you want to go up the next speed. I mean, yeah. to me, that you look at quantum there, they're coming down good pressure. Yeah, it'd be nice in a way if we could see everybody's boat speed on virtual, and actually what's ticking away on the yachts, because we do have that ability from our chase boats to be able to see all that. Yeah, yeah. Space, yeah. Wouldn't that be fun? We can see that, we're quite sure. With our friends in the virtual studio, guys, can we see the boat speeds? Especially from the boats from each side of the course, isn't it? It'd give us a much better idea of the... You could. We usually can, anyway. Provets are hanging in there quite nicely. I think Platoon actually have gained a little bit. Yeah, whether there's been more pressure out that side. I mean, just when we saw the last shots of Quantum, they seem to be moving down well down that left side. But I mean, Virtual shows them 300 metres behind. Yeah, and Baronasek um, obviously on two more jibes. Looks like there's a bit of a shift going on here at the moment. More pressure. Well, just talk to us about the dynamic between the helm and the trimmers and the the tactician. It's yep. the helm who's got the feel and he dictates the kind of boat speed really, doesn't he? The mode, but talking to the trimmer a lot about uh, how much, what he feels and it's a lot of it's about heel as well and everybody, even the foredeck team, you know, monitoring that and trying to keep the boat at the right heel. It's just an ongoing conversation. Which has to be right, and that conversation often continues on ashore. Yeah. It's been interesting with uh, John Cutler taking over the helm on your on your boat. He was totally open at the start, saying that it was a couple of years since he'd steered a race boat of this uh, of this type. And he's clearly got massive talent, but it's taking him a little bit of time to get that feel, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. I mean, he's, he's been the coach for us for a few years. Yeah. And, um, you know, in a way, probably a good rest as well, just to sort of get out of it and, and um, yeah. you know, refresh yourself a bit. But sure, you're getting back into the top fleet. He's going to be a bit rusty. And again, it's Hamish joining us. You know, it's about getting that conversation right. Um, so it's pretty close then around the leeward gate then with Bruna, second the left hand mark looking upwind. Provets are going around pretty much at the same time. Yeah, as the fleet split. I think it's just about trying to make sure you've got a clearer lane with um, fresh air. 
platoon not so quick round the mark, not their best rounding by the looks of things. Phoenix coming in next, and then a leg right behind. Once I'm going to the right hand mark. Having a good drop there. Yeah. Fairly easy conditions for that with uh, straight into the bottom marks. So Phoenix and Quantum Racing swapping places down that run. Run a sec, I think, just keeping the cover on uh, Prevets and Sled. Probably see Platoon prepared to push a little bit further out from their third position. Platoon. A little bit more pressure, I think, now in this second upwind. A bit more heel, a bit more chop, a bit more spray. Yeah, you definitely can see how quite lumpy there it is, isn't it? It's, it's sort of medium. So the conversation now between Cheese and uh, Harm, what's going on? Yeah, just getting the modings right, making sure they've got the speed. Right heel. They've been sailing a bit together now. They have. I mean, I think the team have been together for five years, pretty much. A couple of small changes over the years with uh, Kostecki coming in, I think, wasn't it, for Scarlino two years ago? Yeah. Won the world straight off the bat, if I remember rightly. And the other change there is um, Joel Salter coming on as... Uh, as navigator this year. Slight change of dynamic, very quiet and uh, assured navigator, isn't he? Yeah, it's excellent. Well, uh, guy with plenty of experience. I'm not sure has he sailed with John before? Probably. Mm. He sailed in uh, Team New Zealand, when Team New Zealand won in 2010, I think. Did you know that? <laughs> But yeah, I mean, uh, it's interesting. We we uh, spoke with Will Best, the navigator, on Allegra beforehand just to get some weather information. He said the breeze would be a little bit stronger than it has been. Another couple of knots today, and it's looking pretty good there. Probably 14 knots. Yeah, sea everybody breeze coming in. Hard. You go tacking now on Phoenix. Tina Platner then on the helm. She's loving the circuit and the competitiveness of it. And a few good results. Yeah, I was beating Over. really well. Very yeah. capable of getting a good result. You couldn't write her off in any shape or form. No, no. They do a lot of practice as, as a team down in Cape Town. With their uh, Cape 31s. They've had the whole team down, I think, a couple of times this year. And they did that two-boat programme just um, before... Palma Vela and also before Valencia, they did an extra couple of weeks with both boats. Certainly came into uh, Palma Vela very well practiced. So Azura looking like they've caught up a little bit on Platoon there. Yeah. Alternatively, perhaps Platoon have dropped. Dropped back, yeah. From pushing out to the left. Which hopefully means that Provets has been okay. as the attack. Victor Mourinho there on the pumps for a second. 
Yeah, I think. Mickey Miller settling down there with the. They winding their runners up. Mm -hmm. A few boats decided to put that on board. As well, it's tricky conditions for the runner guides in that sort of 10 to 40 knot breeze. It's max runner load. It's a lot of work to get them. Yeah. Up. Great shot that, isn't it, with the um, virtual, pretty much true to life, isn't it? Then Azura then furthest out to this left side. The Brunei sec did a pretty good job of managing the fleet, such as they can, with the exception of Provetsa, perhaps. <laughs> well, they tacked over the cover, I think. Yeah, yeah. Cool, isn't it? And then got in contact and back back over. Would, I think, wouldn't make us just go. But you would, uh, you'd settle for a second in this guy, would you? No, for sure, yeah. In this fleet, in this race, at this point. Top four, I think you'd settle for in any race. Yeah. You're know, obviously disappointing yesterday to have the two sevenths. Um, having had a great first start, for say, you know, this expectation is so high. Confident, but it's good. We built the confidence. So, what was your kind of debrief last night? Um, I wasn't at it because of fix, fixing something on the boat. Uh, it basically, keep, you know, Peter Evans, our coach, doing, doing a great job. He's um, just keeping the confidence going. You know, bad luck, guys. You know, we can do it again. Yeah. And just going through all the scenarios and talking it through it. It's it's a great feeling this year. We've realised, you know, we got a bit of a kicking last year. Yeah. And we've come back strong, made a few changes, made changes to the boat, and you know everybody's really working very hard to to do better. And that you know means that once the boat hits the dock, there's a lot of you know fair amount of debriefing, a fair amount of conversation going on, and that those conversations continue on into yeah. supper or morning. You know when you hear the guys walking down in the morning, it's they'll be talking stop. to each other. You know what yeah. about this? What about that? It's, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a great passion in the fleet, everybody realising that you need to do well in this fleet. There's no, uh, no downtime. No, certainly not. Uh, we're watching uh, the Renaissance coming across and then it tack on uh, the vets in the next few seconds. Yeah, hopefully it won't push us back too much. And the lake is that. Slide. Slide in shot there. Slide have made a bit of a, bit of a comeback, haven't they? Slide through Azura by the looks of things. Yeah, it doesn't look like choosing to slap one on us, so. That's good news. Slide have a Ray Davis back on board for this one regatta only, I think. Did not have a good regatta in the horn. I, think it's a, I believe it's as much about Ray's availability at the moment and what's going on at Team New Zealand. That yeah, well, we're well. a few refinements in terms of the structure, I believe, and we'll find now. But and Diego would let me have a get on board. <laughs> it's the third boat as well out of that mould. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we're just getting better and better at the refinements. Finishing them, finishing them off so that when yeah. you hit the water, there's less issues. It's quantum allegra, isn't it? Yeah. From uh, Longitudero. Yeah, it's definitely seems to have done a really nice job. There hasn't been too many or any late night grindings, yeah. broken breakages. So we shall see in Cascais. So that's always the telling regatta. The thing about Cascais is we haven't sailed there in June or July for quite a long time, and you. You can you can get anything. We were very lucky last year. I think that was last year's Cascais regatta was the best regatta I can remember ever with the 50 years when it just blew every day. Yeah. Not so good if you're a short guy. Right? Seems to remember all this. <laughs> several late nights, waterproofing issues. <laughs> Hopefully we've got it all sorted out for next year. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, clearly looking at um, um, platoon, they're moving themselves for another breezy regatta, and they obviously feel that it's going to be breezy there. Time will tell. But in terms of moating the boats for the season, if you like, it's not a shot in the dark, is it? 
you know, the navigators and the sure. the experts look at the wind data for uh, the season at the different venues historically, or they'll they'll have somebody who'll do that for them. But uh, that kind of thing's available. Yeah, and the guys really are beginning readily. to know, obviously, cash guys quite well. Yeah. Looks like they might be doing a little bit better out there on the right. So big picture looking quite good then for Berenicek and uh, Pavetz in terms of the overalls that went on the water. Azura leading on 13 points, Berenicek 14, Platoon 15. Sled actually up to fourth after that third and fourth yesterday in 17. So we're seeing Sled up to second. So Ray Davis may be working a little bit of magic after all. But he is sailing a strategist, of course, Adam Beetle as a tactician. So Ray's there as an extra pair of eyes. Yeah, great to have that level of skill, looking out, yeah. basically watching your back, feeding you with uh, accurate information. It's so important, and then it you know, frees you up to be able to think more on the bigger picture. Yeah. Less of an unknown, and also great for confidence as well. Each other. But I mean, as you say, or you said earlier on, Guy, it's so much about confidence, and I think Sled in particular started so well in uh, Palma Vela and really had a, he definitely had speed in a little extra mode somewhere, and then they had lost their uh, their grinder. Yeah. And I think that kind of knocked their confidence a little bit because they missed a couple of races, and they would have won the regatta, yeah. I think. Cool. And then that just put them off kilter a little bit coming into Mahon. So I think having Ray here and just adding an extra dimension might get them back on track. They were, say, fourth going into this race. Yeah, and I guess as well with the owner drivers, um, yeah, it it's, you know, allows the main sheet trimmer to concentrate on helping the driver and keeping that conversation going rather than trying to help Manage. out the tactical point yeah. as well. Um, Interesting talking to Rod Davis about the owner driver on the uh, sled to Kashiakura. He uh, is not having time or choosing not to do very much practice pre regattas. So he flew in on Monday morning or overnight, came in six, six o'clock, he landed on the boat straight out, banged in a couple of races. Yeah, pretty tough. And I think Rob was steering for the Palma Vela regatta as well. So yeah. it shows the boats quick. Everything's all up together. Hand the boat over to the owner. Looks like quite a nice lay line here for uh, Bruno Sack. Yeah, a little bit more bunched up in the second, third place. And hopefully we can squeeze around the front. A good beat for a platoon by the looks of things. Yeah. Hopefully, Prevets are not too skinny on the ley line and having to squeeze up. Looks like she's holding a position. I'm allowed to. Um, You're allowed to be as biased as you like. Of course, you are, yeah. We let like Fergal Finlay occasionally call for the, the gladiator. Yeah, well, I was going to say Fergal normally does such a great job in this position. Whenever I listen, he's, he's excellent at it. <laughs> and, and if he's listening now, Fergal, I have got the two blocks I owe you for the last four gaps. I will send them to you. <laughs> Indeed, then, Brunanasek going around the top mark with the lead. Second time up. Lead of about uh, 60 metres. And as you say, that skinny lay line just working for Prevets. A great call from the Wizard of Palma Bay, Nacho Postigo. And holding up sled quite nicely. In the meantime, platoon also in turn so Prevets are coming around in the second guy then Sled good recovery from them they were I think uh, fifth at the bottom mark at the uh, leeward gate Sled coming through next 
then Platoon, then Azura, Quantum, Phoenix and Allegra back in uh, eighth. Jenny, a good beat then uh, for the sled in particular, making some nice gains. Yeah, I think possibly one of the first boats to decide well on the right side, although Dog, uh, Brennan Asek got from headed left at the mark and then protected towards the right, and I think they were able to make extension, that six boat length extension over Prevetsa by just maybe sailing a touch better on the shifts. But yeah, sled really coming out, doing well. Kind of didn't get in the battle of the back of the pack. The platoon while then um, face plant on as we saw as a sort of face plant on Quantum, and I think Sled was just able to sneak out and sneak up into into third place. And as you said, they're sitting in fourth. Ball. Eight, two, three, four. So they just had the one bad race early on, but really the points so close this early in the regatta. It's just 13 points for first, 17 points for fourth place. So there's still a lot to go. I think I think the the really impressive thing, as we were saying earlier, Brendan Asset Gazprom already sitting second, going to be moving into first winning this race um, since Azura is so far back in the pack. And and surprising that we want him with another deep one. I think we know, and we're talking about it here, sure, but the team's a little jumbled on board quantum racing. It's not the team we saw last year. Ed Baird stepping back onto the helm after having not been helming that boat for a while. And maybe they're just needing to kind of figure out their teamwork again, do you think, Andy? I think it's a combination of uh, lots of different little things. Um, uh, and you know for sure, I think they miss the uh, the, the perfect uh, perfection hard driving Terry. You know, it's a different dynamic for sure, and I think that's evident at different levels through the team just now. When they're kind of uh, trying to find their their mojo again. They're very tough boots to fill in the way, and you know when we're talking about the confidence coming in on the back of those results. Because the team, to look, you know, they're, when there there are down moments, if you like, when they have a bad result, then they look they would look normally to Terry, and Terry would, you know, be cracking the whip or, or giving them that confidence. Yeah, they were always good last season at you know digging their way through the fleet as well. If they were, weren't doing too well, suddenly they'd pop up. But to be fair, I think, you know, two race courses that we haven't known that well. Mahon was a, a difficult, subtle race course and not easy to pick your way back up through the fleet. And, and the, the same is evident here, where there are no, uh, there's no big gains to be made. No, I don't think anybody's writing anybody off at this stage. No, no, yeah. absolutely not. You know, Quantum could still win this regatta. And, and go on to win the season. It's, it's, yeah, everybody's, anybody's race. makes it a great class to be involved in. Absolutely. It's, uh, I never, never like to see that. One of the key, or the history notes on the, on the web page is always Azura and Quantum winning. Yeah. We, we did definitely have to stop that, but I mean, fair play to the, the yeah. best boats. But I, you know, I have said in other places that I think Platoon have got all the elements to win the season. It's really down to them to put them all together and keep it all working over the course of the season but you know in terms of tools in your toolbox every team has, has pretty much got that it's really how you use them and how you sustain it over a 50 50 race season or 40 something races over the course of the season yeah for sure to keep it going it's, it's going to be really hard for us having I had a great regatta in the last regatta and then coming here you know, as you say the expectations are very high if you do get a bad day like yesterday, it's so easy to move yourselves back. Yeah. It's, it is so tricky. And then to keep that up for the five regattas. Any luck will be in that inside any of five or six boats. In the hunt? Yeah. One of them being Prevet, so Of course. We've had your moments in Sardinia, haven't you? Yeah, we have. Yeah, we were nearly one. What, I remember years that two years ago. But, it, but then, to be fair, Quantum had broken that. It's yeah, yeah. The Iran one that was a yeah. hell of a deal, wasn't it? Yeah, massive. We were cheering in the container and then the kick came. And I think Virtual Eye broke down at that point as well. It's probably why <laughs> I have a heart attack when Virtual Eye stops. Yeah. 
to do well if you do uh, yeah, look, this. Just trying to move the weight after a little bit there as when we were talking about the different modes, you can see the bow just pop out there. Obviously yeah. got a good breeze on at the moment, you know. So that's the that conversation between Sir Fry and John, you know, the, 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 just the feel of the boat. Now it looks like it's gone a little bit lighter, the bow's dropped in, both guys are moving forward a bit. It's just trying to catch that before it happens almost and yeah. say the boat into it. Minimise the movements in the helm until you really need to. Yeah, really tricky. But it. But clearly, you know, as Jenny was saying, and we were saying earlier on, I mean, clearly, Chimi Fontella has got something pretty special when you can win the. Uh, 470 Olympic gold medal in Rio and then move to the 49er and win the Worlds on the back of that. Granted, you know, cards on the table, it's not the strongest period immediately post-Olympics, but uh, still a pretty strong fleet in the 49er then. And he's done well since. But he's not done a lot of this, you know, top-level Grand Prix big boat sailing. seems to have adapted to like a duck to water. But I guess as well for him to come into a boat, you know, which is new and yeah. a team that has been together before, but not really. Yeah. So you can then get in there with a fresh, you know, no politics type yeah, yeah. approach. You're not coming into Quantum, you're not coming into Azura. Yeah. We did work with Azura in, uh, in uh, his native Croatia last year, on board yeah. then with Platoon then. John Kostecki kneeling down there to our left, the uh, tactician. Yeah, looking. He's quite side. a little bit lighter, isn't it? Oh, a little soft on board. So whether the sled's got a little bit more on the other side of the course with. I wonder how much chewing gum they go through in the platoon. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just it's probably quite a bit, is it? Yeah, everybody's got it. Yeah, we keep a pack in our onboard toolkit for the nights. Just reduces the tension a little bit, I think, perhaps. But platoon chasing Provetsa downwind there. Sled out to that left side. And then a sec, have liked the right and the runs. Yeah, virtual eyes making it pretty close there between Provetsa and Sled at the moment. Looks like good pressure. You would instinctively expect the pressure to come down from the high right looking up the course. Zura back up to fourth. Forecast with it being increasing a little bit more this afternoon now, three o'clock, three to four. Not looking so fast. No. So the, the two weeks prior to the start of this regatta, it's been absolutely honking. Yeah. But but that's pretty much a pattern here, isn't it? You get this Levante blows for several days. And then you go back to see these. So what a close race this has been. But we're going to say have led since the uh, top mark. Yeah, they've done well. and played all sides of the field as well. It's not in a one-way course at all. So they've obviously sailed the boat consistently.
So looking good uh, for Brunna second the overalls uh, into uh, towards the end of race five now. Brunna sec were second going into this race on 14 points, just one. Pretty light though as they come down to the finish line.
and bring that back and forth. So suddenly I've got somebody staying in the festival for seven nights for 70 quid a night. Yeah, uh, and they're laughing. And they're laughing. And, and I'm going, and, 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 um, and yeah. they don't care. Yeah. It's just like, sorry, I'll fix it now. Yeah, it's too late. But at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's, and then I've got one person staying for 220 a night. Yeah. <laughs> but I think, it, I think, I think ongoing, it's, it's a pretty good thing to do, but. It's been good, my place, and having my neighbour look after it, who has a little business, and yeah. she runs, does another property. Yeah. It works out well. But I'm getting. She cleans it, does she? Uh, yeah, she does, yeah. She gives herself a day to you clean see that, it. See, that's the thing, is my neighbour, I, I just wouldn't want to fall out with her. My daughter lives across the road. Oui, oui. Quoi? Copy. Yeah, I have to, because it's tucked into my jacket, I have to remember if I'm speaking it to speak into it. It's 69, yeah. People in the house and it keeps the house maintained.
Welcome back to Puerto Sherry then, where the Royal Cup reaches the uh, midpoint. We've done five races and five different winners. Brunenasek just winning a great uh, great race all the way from the uh, start line round the top mark in front. Guy, uh, great race, wasn't it? And Brunenasek showing the way around the course. Yeah, they did a great job, yeah. Got out in the lead and stayed ahead. There's the standings then, as I said, Brunenasek uh, leading now by three points and Azura and Platoon on the same points, Pervets and Sled on the same points uh, and really who could guess who's going to win this regatta uh, after race number 10. Hopefully we can join uh, Jenny Tullock who's on the water and uh, will tell us how the conditions I mean, to us, they look uh, idyllic, Jenny. You know, it is idyllic, but I think in many ways it's sort of we're feeling the forecasts are meant to be wrong scenario. You guys saw throughout that last race, a sea breeze typically builds throughout the afternoon, but last race we had it kind of dying um, just barely, ever so slightly on that second downwind. And I was expecting we'd heard maybe up to 17 knots, and I think realistically it's still sitting around 12, 11, 13 at the moment. So some of these guys who were chomping to get some breezier conditions might be just the tiniest bit so disappointed. However, it is a stunning day on the water, like you said. It is glorious um, waves out here in the Atlantic Ocean, the Bay of Cadiz, and I think it's probably much, much colder out here for us than those of you guys ashore. I mean, we're still feeling the cold water that is the Atlantic Ocean, and that's what makes this sea breeze. That's why we have such good breeze right now, because the land of Spain is so hot. I was in um, shorts and a tank top on shore with flip-flops, and now I'm in offshore boots and full full weather kit. And I think um, probably the guys on the race boats working a little bit too hard to be that dressed up, but it is a very different feeling. So we have two minutes to go now to the start. You can see the teams just kind of battling for their final positions on the line at the moment, Andy. And I think we're seeing actually just there, Brennan Nisek, the winners of the last race, just possibly in a, an awkward scenario there with Platoon, but probably wasn't actually a foul, just not a not an easy place to be. And yet, realistically, Quantum Racing switching sides from where they'd been at the boat end last time to coming down to fight over for the pin end against Platoon. How does the beat look, Jenny? And what was your analysis after that uh, after that first race? You know, the interesting part, we talked about it a couple times, Allegre with such a good start at the pin that's faltering throughout the first upwind mark. And I think, as as Guy mentioned, the two teams who did do well by the top mark, Brennan Nasek and, and Prevetza, both had had decent starts as well. So I think at the moment, it's kind of too hard to say whether left or right. It's really difficult to read the water here. The, the green uh, kind of murky color of the tide going out here is um, is difficult to read the race course on and yet I think we've seen the left continuously do fine so I wouldn't be putting my money too hard on the right I think quantum racing realized that tacking out early uh, on the last upwind of the well the first up, the first race the first upwind didn't work out well for them so I think that's why we're seeing many of these guys fighting for the pin and platoon they had this exact same scenario last race they were set up close to the pin, wanting the pin end, and they didn't quite execute it perfectly. They just let Allegra slip out over the top of them. So right now, with 20 seconds to go, Platoon probably looking a little bit happier with a little bit um, closer gauge to Quantum Racing. Again, Brennan Nasek right in the middle of the line, and that's where they started last time to win the last race. Prevetsa just below them here, nine seconds to go to start. Everyone putting their bows down from the committee boat end with Allegra all the way down to Platoon here. Three two, one, that's the gun. And I think, again, we're seeing red bows and blue bows in the center of the line. Brennanisek and, and Prevetsa both doing well, but Platoon, I called them having a really nice start last time, and yet we saw Allegra punching their bow out instantly. This time, I think we're seeing them have a nicer start because there's no one on top of them. And then just further down the line, actually looks like Sled at the boat end of the line has had quite a nice start as well. Sled coming off the line, probably slightly higher, correspondingly, Platoon keeping the bow down, I think, and just driving. Now, that really was a kind of time and distance start, wasn't it, from Platoon? We saw uh, Harmler Spear pull the bow down and uh, pull the pin earlier just to get that pace on the line, Guy. Yeah, we had that run to me to speed up and, and probably be over targets when he hit the line so that he able to pop his bow out. But very, very even there with the boats, just to weather off them. You know, classic, very even sight, stop, beautifully timed, no sort of middle of the line sag. We're seeing a little bit of that now, and the, the, but they're a bit tighter, the boats, so they're affecting each other a little bit more in the center of the line.
Certainly with the um, Brunner sec appear to be being affected very slightly by the uh, Provetsa just now, Jenny. Yeah, and it's, it's, I was just thinking the same. You're losing the blue valve altogether in our in our line of sight, which means soon they're going to have to be tacking. But above them is Phoenix. So Phoenix kind of giving Brennanisek that really hard piggy in the middle spot, but Phoenix holding on quite nicely to what is a really difficult line. And we're seeing the very first boat to have tacked out. That's Azura, the orange stripes on the blue hull, um, having been forced out to the right-hand side. And they hadn't had such a great race last race either they had moments up there but i think finished about fourth or fifth and realistically we're going to see brennan having to tack out soon getting squeezed out the back we haven't quite seen it yet but uh you can see the blue and the blue hull on the yeah i'm um, just squeezing out the back end of that of that pig in the middle but everyone's hung a lot longer than they hung in the first race the first race within the first 10 seconds of the gun going um three or four teams had, had tacked out to the right hand side so I think, as Guy said, it was it was horses for courses for a little while there with a really nice even start. We're just now um, getting to see who's really taken advantage, and I I still think the tune's done really nicely. You definitely seem to be going well in their clear air. As Bovets are taking packing out now, it's going to take a few stones. It did look a little bit like there was possibly a knock starting to happen as the left-hand boats were all lining up. image of a platoon there so there's a question there for you guy you'll be able to answer the question how much does it cost to run a tp52 in the 52 super series for a season i don't think i should say <laughs> but uh yeah ballpark it's kind of two two something mm. two million something like that regatta is about three hundred thousand. yeah yeah but I mean, it varies from boat to boat and project to project. Top end, probably just uh, north of two million, I would reckon. Possibly. Possibly, perhaps more. Obviously, you know, last year with the build year as well. Makes it yeah, and this is an X build, but. Um, what's the most expensive part of the program? Well, for sure, that build, but then. No, after, after the build, but I mean. Sales, sales and people, yeah. Shipping can be quite expensive depending yeah. on where we go. We're going to South Africa next season. Yeah, indeed, we're going to South Africa next season. We're looking forward to that. But uh, meantime, in the here and now, Quantum Racing and uh, sorry, Sled and Allegra, I think, there in the middle of the course, just keeping the bows in front. I think sailing a little bit higher. We're on board then with the uh, third pedestal. Our favourite view of the uh, platoon. Once again, harm will spear the helmsman. Harm just loves the uh, challenge of racing against the pro drivers. And uh, at this point, head to head with uh, America's Cup winning helm, head beard, and I think probably very, very even between the two. These two boats in the middle uh, seem to just have a little bit more height, uh, Guy. Yeah, they've just popped out a little bit. They haven't tacked yet, though, as well. Yeah. So, um, a little bit of a right-hander shift, possibly, without the tack. So, taking advantage of that in the middle of the course. Yeah, Johnny, the two boats in the middle, then, Sled and Allegra, looking pretty good just now. Yeah, I think Guy nailed it earlier. It did look like there was the tiniest bit of a left shift on the on the bows coming down near me, which is Platoon and Quantum. And yet that lefty didn't extend to Sled and Allegra. So Sled in the middle of the race course, they'd had beautiful starts up at the boat end of the line. And they're just in what looks like a tiny breeze line coming down from the top right. And they were the only ones not forced to tack out, and they've been able to really extend based on this righty and continuing to extend, and the rest of the guys had to tack sort of through the right shift and then uh, quickly came back onto starboard to try to continue to take advantage. But it's given quite a good uh, lead early on to the two light-colored boats, to Sled, who's just over the top of Allegra, but Allegra kind of still holding their position. They've not ever actually been rolled by Sled there doing a good job so far keeping that spot and I think you can see them here crossing quantum racing and crossing platoon 
but none of these four boats had had to deal with attack yet. So definitely the winners on board SLED, and there goes SLED. And as you said earlier, Adam Bischel calling tactics now, although he's got Ray Davies backing him up as strategist. So a switch from last year's positions for those two. Um, but they're going for the put the herd on Quantum Racing, and they've just forced Quantum ping pong them back to the left hand side. And Allegra only continued about one more boat length, and then I've tacked over as well. So a good time for those two from the middle to to check in on the right hand side. And I think they were probably taking just the tiniest bit of hitch and maybe a touch of a left shift as the timing as well. Both Quantum and Platoon forced back out to the left. Looking like the vets took a little bit of a right here, a little bit of a lift, and that guy just getting into the picture. Yeah, well, in third. yeah certainly hoping so. We were bagging a little bit. The owner driver, Sled, is definitely doing a good job on this. Oh, yeah. On this leg, so um, anybody's got it. Yeah, we're two tacks in now, aren't we? So then taking the transom of. Um, but Allegra, so not too bad, and Allegra only tapping once. A little bit more wind pressure, Jenny, by the looks of things. <laughs> earlier by saying that it was lighter than expected. You could do that expected. anytime. <laughs> so it is, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's early days yet, Stead. Yeah, it's still course. only 3, 3.30 in the afternoon, so I think to give us the hope that it could still continue to build. It definitely could continue to build to five, and it, it feels pretty fresh right now, so it's um, uh, it's nice for the guys out there and it allows them to stretch their legs, but Quantum tacking back again, Platoon setting up to tack back as well. Platoon not really giving them any option um, for a double tack later on when they get to the starboard ley line. Platoon wants to be right in there and forcing Quantum, but we are getting close to what might be port ley line now, so it is the right times to be making those decisions about when to go back. And agreed, you guys, Provetsa looking good from the right for having done two tacks already to be that close to the two leaders. And I think Brennanisek maybe has come back from that horrible start to not be so deep either. It's just that the advantage just swings and roundabouts. Reason really in it. I mean, a minute ago, platoon were good. Now Virtual's got the eight by 110 meters on the leg room. Yeah, you wouldn't want to be a tactician out there this afternoon. Well, I mean, yeah. we're quite good in the studio, thanks, Ken. Yeah. <laughs> Armchair tacticians all. <laughs> but, I mean, equally, you know, you would not have really bet on the leg room sled from the middle of the line, though they did have good, good starts. But, it, you know, it is, uh, you said before, Guy, that uh, Brennanisek really sailed the mid, kind of middle, middle right in the, uh, in the previous race, in the early part of the beat, and it ju just was pressure. A lane of pressure that they uh, worked. And I think that's the case just now for Sled and Allegro. The Azula coming good. Just keeping, out clear on. keeping everything clear. Keeping. Now everybody's tapping like uh, there's no tomorrow. It would be interesting to see how well they've done up the rock now. Isn't it? Well, it's looking quite good for Azula then, isn't yeah. it? Just darker. Uh, see if Azura actually crossed um, Sled and Allegra, because to, to my eye it looks like it might, they might have. Certainly they're leading on virtual by about 35 meters. Right, yeah, just stay out of the fray, don't get anyone tacking on you. No, completely. They weren't forced out either, they got to pick when they wanted to go to the right, so they probably were able to actually pick that tiny left shift to take it up, and, and they've definitely benefited from it. Yeah, and I would have said with these lumpy conditions, you know, it's choosing the moment to tack, isn't it? Making sure you're pressured up and you get, you know, get, a, get out of it cleanly and get back on boat speed. Yeah, we spoke earlier about how it's, there's not much land between here and, and America, but it's also outgoing tide, so you can see how light-colored the water is. But you can, I'm not sure if you can see in camera, it must be hard, but just along the shoreline the water is getting dark so it, it means the tide has switched along the shore and whether that actually continues out here in the next hour or the next two hours. ...tide as well which makes 
the, the chop that we have from the Atlantic Ocean even choppier and even harder to sail through. And yeah, guys, that even more important to time your maneuvers for the right times and hopefully the flattest times as possible. It's funny because this side of the course looks quite good on the um, we look at quantum just now, but uh, I think it's just the angle and where we are. Closing on the Provetta. And I think unfortunately for quantum, there's still a lot more port tack left to yeah. go a lot less starboard and so if they have anything like Provenza just face planting them that's maybe why they haven't even tacked off here there's just not a lot of runway out so they're left to to take advantage of so they're gonna have to sit in bad air if they get stuck and i think right now they might live okay but they might not on Provenza's hip Yeah, meantime, Azura just have control of that middle group. The only uh, outliers really are, I think, Phoenix Rear on the right side. And Bernasek in the middle of that group. I'm sorry, no sled. Platoon now, so wouldn't, wouldn't have guessed it earlier. You kind of feel like you called the wrong side last time, or at least didn't execute to, to the right side well last time, and then tried to switch it up to go up the pin, and kind of just got called out the wrong time with the pin as well. The guys from the middle, sled and Allegra, at least a little bit, were able to, to get through, and Quantum and Platoon definitely not. But, you know, overall, this is turning out to be a fascinating regatta. It's so hard to predict who's going to win the next race. There's no, uh, no form from one race to the next. Could be pretty interesting here as they come into the starboard ley line and all the, uh, the boats will tack over the actual positions and the dipping that's going to have to go on. And you really don't want to misjudge a wave, right? No. <laughs> no. Phoenix 11 and uh, Tina Platner are doing quite well out on that right side. They've done well just to stay out of it, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. Themselves and go on with their own race. What to be said for that. Certainly, so they're the top two boats in the regatta, side by side, Atsura and Brunanasek. Atsura keeping Brunanasek in check for the meantime. And in fact, Platoon just to leeward of them, so the top three boats in the uh, overall, albeit not in that order, Brunanasek leading just now. Here, Azura, they're having a good second race like they did yesterday. Yeah, exactly. A bit of a pattern they've got. Maybe we can have the second race first. Too yeah. bad. <laughs> Get up early, yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's better, strange, isn't it? Because, you know, we're so not used to starting a race at 2 o'clock. Nobody's wandering around with an hour in hand going, what are we doing now? Especially when we're all geared up, aren't yeah, we? Yeah. We're all thinking it's going to be an enemy start, it's going to be lots of breeze. Yeah. That's just about the timing of the sea breeze build. So, Jenny, Azura just crossing in front of Sled out to uh, command the uh, starboard ley line, I think, just in the next few seconds. Yeah, I was just looking at when are they going to attack. They they seem like they've actually extended past Sled's line. Sled might have 
might have made that their final. They might be a bit understood and have to go again. But Azura extending into the lead here. And I think we said that they did it just by executing early to get into clear lanes and not get tacked on by anyone. They, they weren't really memorable at the start. I don't think we can in a second. That's a bit. It's a front lane line. A bit hard to plan to. But, um, not necessarily, but trying to attack a lead, isn't it? For them just now. I guess we must have had a pretty good run there. Some nice pressure with a, yeah. that jive off on report. Maybe a little bit more pressure out on that right hand side, so. It's looking like a pretty decent day for the Provetsa. Oh, no. Not wanting to jinx anything, no, but. We're uh, not, no. I Bold move to tack away now, wouldn't it? Mm. Absolutely. Unfortunately for Quantum and Platoon, he's got to follow everybody. A bit there. So, Jenny, we're going to pass this one to you. What's the best way for a young sailor to, pro to progress into something like the 52 Super Series? Oh goodness, there are such a, a varied number of ways of getting into racing. I think I personally grew up as a dinghy sailor and I think I think it's the best way to learn everything about sailing, understanding a race course, understanding how to trim a sail, understanding driving, the mechanics of that. But there's a number of people who grew up sailing on bigger boats who, who go down to the dock at the local club or the local sailing arena and sort of say, does anyone need crew for this weekend or this Wednesday night or this Thursday night? And, there's always going to be a boat that needs a body at, at kind of the beer can racing, as we call it. And if you can get on a team like that, that then lets you yeah. keep coming back and back and you can just soak up the knowledge of the people around you. It's it's equally as good. And I think that's the thing is just to, to be in the learning mindset forever and always, because this sport is one that nobody can ever say they're perfect at. You know, no race is ever the same as the race before. No boat and no team is ever exactly the same as as the day before or the hour before and i think that's the kind of mentality that guys like the 52 super series have and have always had and that's the sort of thing that that once you figure out how to get into sailing then just have that eager learning mentality that i don't know guy i'm sure your team has it that makes everyone else want to sail with you and want to teach you and want to learn from you and gets you on boats like this and and into kind of the pro world of it yeah i mean clearly the, the best way it, it depends what you want to do on the boat it, if you really want to be that helmsman and tactician, then you need to go and win yourself an Olympic medal. That's the case, isn't it? Um, but if you want to just come and get involved, like um, my uh, the nipper that we have working for us, Finn Clark, and he just came down to the dock in Qashqai's last year and chatted us up and said anything we can do to help, and he sponged the boat out for three or four days with us. And at the end of the season, I gave him a ring and said, you want to come work for us? You're not going to go any sailing, but you are going to spend the season with the boats. And he's here, and he's doing a great job. And uh, he's excited to be with the team, and he, we're really excited to have him. But the downside of that is he's not getting any sailing in, and that, you know, he's going to suffer for that if he actually wants to end up racing on the boats. So, tricky. Who you know? I'm in from a relatively and then be prepared not to sail again. Yeah. <laughs> And there's the element of, of fitness as well. I mean, there's yeah. the knowing the skills and the being on board and the being able to deal with the team. And there's the, you know, these these bowmen and massmen and mid bows and grinders and trimmers. They are all as strong as they can be. And that's the, the talent that you need, but also the um, personality drive that you need to, to succeed as well is to just know that you're going to spend hours on end on the water and no matter what boat you're sailing on, but you also need to make sure that you're 
top of your game and your in your body physicality as well. Yeah, I guess it's so specialist these days as well. You, you want to identify which position you want to take on the boat and aim for it. And if, you know, if that's a grinder, then you've got to go stop pumping the iron. Or if it's a bowman, you need to get yourself out sailing in small boats and understand how it all works and throw yourself around. The grinder's role, will that and be there? And the role of yeah. pitman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The pitman. Well, you want to do the The role of pitman is such a unique one as well. Yeah, yeah you have to kind of have been a bowman, you also have to sort the side. Yeah, <laughs> having done it, isn't it, isn't it, you end up being the crew boss as well, kind of, in the manoeuvres on the boat, so there be a huge amount of respect between everybody. So you have to have done the bow. Yeah, I think so. You've got to know what it's yep. like to be that poor bloke at the front. Know but what I he think wants. you nailed it there. It's the level of respect as well. The pitman yeah. is like the orchestra. Uh, conductor at the same time and if someone in the back is asking for something that's not possible on the bow they figure out the right flight way to, to get to smooth the maneuver so all sides are happy and it actually works out I think that's that's like management 101 or 10,001 it's a really difficult um, thing to do to be able to orchestrate that but they, they all do it with finesse finesse so what uh, what defines a very good pitman from a good pitman I guess actually probably having done a lot of match racing, uh, uh -huh. that's, that's a good skill set because you've just been around the course so many times, seen so many different scenarios happen. Um, knowing what the bowman's doing and what second he's going to do, yeah, second yeah. guess what he's going to have, and then keeping that bow team awake around you and, and talking them through all the different scenarios. You don't talk them through the scenarios, but you just make them think about it, what happens if? But you can't do that while you're racing, so you ask them that when you're on the dock. You know, just yeah. keeping them, the guys tuned into the way you're thinking so that that bow team is thinking in the same way. And then being able to see the trimmers, helmsmen, and feel the boat underneath as you're sitting on the rail you know, as to what mode we're going to go into this bottom mark. Are we slow? Are we fast? There's so many different... And then you orchestrate the team, your front team, with that, getting them all to wake up. I always say far much easier for whatever it is, well, people to watch one person do their job properly. I mean, everybody's keen to jump yeah, yeah. in and do a job, but far better to have one person does that job properly once rather than three or four people get in the way. It's, it's about managing that. Just keenness as well. No, no, guys, sit down. We don't need this. We're just, you know, we're yeah. running one person. So, I love it. It's the part of yacht racing to me, which is the most fun. I'm not that interested in the tactical side of it, and I don't know that much about it because I haven't really ever concentrated that much. Yeah. I, it's, it's the and do you have an input into the performance on that side? Yeah, I do a little bit. Um, obviously, our team's quite well established. Togan's our pit man, um, does a fairly reasonable, reasonable job, but he's, he's one of our amateurs on board. Yeah. He's not that experienced. He's not the crew boss on it. And we, you know, it's, it's fair to say that Provetsa does have some difficulty getting the spinnaker in down around the bottom mark sometimes and a lot of that's on the timing and it's you know it must be very difficult for our pit man because he's probably got five opinions being shouted at him and what he should be doing around the bottom mark uh, whereas if it was someone like myself or Alan Smith maybe maybe he's going to question it yeah it's going to let you get on and do your job and subsequently it's much easier than yeah I'm interested in that whether you end up being the buffer yeah if you like where you're the diplomat <laughs> it, it can in be Britain. it can be very tough yeah you know, it's difficult, as Jenny's saying, you know, to turn around the back of the boat and say, no, we can't do that, uh, or, you know, we need a bit more time. If the boat, if nobody has confidence in you, it's just a little bit what we're experiencing under that, so it's, it's, it's tough. But we're doing really well. We've got the, we've got the momentum at the moment. Uh, um, hopefully we're going to see some more good, good crew work here. You have three, three amateurs on board. Yeah, we do, yeah, yeah. And they're amateurs in positions which are... Well, I mean, I guess we've got Provence in the um, sewer, Mark's mat, mat. Possibly that's a position that you would have your amateur in. But we've also got um, uh, Armit on the runners. Um, yeah. And again, that's, you know, all these other boats, um, we were talking about Ray Davis earlier, I think he's doing the runner, or, or at least the tactical slot yeah. there, you know, or, or is it um, Tony you, Ray? You know, you've got it, really yeah. good sailors here. There's a main ship. Victor much. Mourinho yeah. on, the, um, on the platoon, you know, that... You, tend to overlook the runner as, you know, just keeping the mast up, when really that's your accelerator, isn't exactly. it? Exactly, it makes a huge difference to the main ship trim, and it means another one of the, the people steering the boat in a way, and yeah. have that as an amateur slot, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. And especially on today's conditions, where the runner's at full load, um, you know, easing it is, is not an easy job. It doesn't just slide out. If, if, you, if you're a little bit slow or you're a little bit soft on it, it'll go bang. 
yeah. and it'll hurt your hands and, and everybody in the boat will sound <laughs> look at you like you're an absolute buffoon. Um, it, it's, it's a really hard job. So. But actually made it a little bit easier yeah. if the ropes are wet. If it, when it's a dry day, it's even harder. Yeah. But yeah, th that whole sort of... I mean, you know, it's something we overlook. We, it's good to remind us that with the Privetza that, you know, we, it's been a case with Gladiator with... Um, you know, Tony's enjoyed sailing with some of his friends who have been with him for years, but um, Ergen wants that core in, on his boat, and that's the way it is. Yeah, 88, some of them have, have been yeah. with him for, and it's, you know, it's, 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 it's not going to change. And as professionals, we all, we do get frustrated with it at times, you know, but they try their hardest, and you've got to just keep, keep them tuned in. Yeah. And it's really interesting the dynamics of the um, race team on board. Everybody's just not just sitting there. Everybody's got an amazing role to play, and it, and it all looks so easy as we watch them go around because they are some of the best guys in the world here. Um, but it isn't that. Everyone's, everything's got to be in the right place at the right time. Anyway, Azura have a nice lay line up to the uh, top mark and a very nice lead, Jenny. So you're happy to be driving the boat, looking back and going, okay, I'm not that worried about the, the fleet behind me. Whereas the, the four guys behind, Sled was in second at the last time at the top mark. I think at the bottom, we sort of saw Sled and Brennanisek tied, but it now looks like Prevetsa from the left might be into the second position. For, so the rest of them all fighting with each other has just given Azura the ability to really run away with it. And I think we can't forget, we talked to Madam a lot last season, but we can't forget that Santiago Longe um, filled in the tactician role on Azora last season for Vasco Viscoto, who'd been with the team forever, but had left to go to Luna Rosa and brought a team in the America's Cup and in the 52s last year. And I think it took them a little while to, to find their feet last year. They're the only other team aside from Quantum who's won the season three times. Quantum's won it four now after last year. But, um, but that dynamic is probably a very different dynamic on board to have Santi, who's so reserved, so polite, so um, uh, probably quiet in some ways, uh, replacing someone who's known for sort of being Italian emotional and, and sometimes perhaps you could say hot headed. And I think I think the reality of, of that, no, no, never, no, I, I could hear him sometimes from the commentary. But. <laughs> But I think I think that's something that had to work through, and I think it's good to see them uh, sitting well here this year and sitting oh, clearly such good position in this race. This has probably turned from what was a two boat lead, two boat link lead at the first top mark to six, seven, ten boat link lead now. So yeah, the Italians will be happy. Let's go with the third. Okay. Maybe the third boat this time. Maybe without Vasco, even behind them here, Prevetsa. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, uh, it's hard with the personality Vasco, ones. Yeah. We've spoken about Terry as well, haven't we? And, and yeah. he's not here either. Speak about them the guys with the loud personalities. Can talk about Terry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. So Prevetsa did manage to claw their way up into second. So, Guy, you should be happy with that. That'll be. Two seconds for the day, I think, if they hold this off to the finish. Be great and, day. And we don't have um, behind them, Phoenix well. into yeah. third. With all credit to Phoenix then, coming round in third, their best race of the regatta so far, Tina Plattner. Holding her own there very nicely. And ahead of the set and sled. And that will all be to uh, Azura's good in the overall. I think that might have just been that that we were talking about that bottom left corner on that downwind. We saw Sled get light when they came a little too close to us in that bottom left corner. And I think everyone else, Provetsa included, had jived off sooner on the downwind and that had paid off. We, we talked about it as they were going up back upwind. I asked why no one had jived off earlier, but I think that was big gains to be made for some of these guys for Provetsa and Phoenix and big losses for, for Nenasek and Sled. And, and perhaps that's as well why Platoon was able to make it through back from their dead last to at least be ahead of Quantum. Um, I can't see them now in the back of the pack as we've started to motor forward with the with the second and third place, but still quite a tussle between sixth to ninth place to not be last for this race. But um, Prevetsa going downwind again. The breeze has just been very up and down this afternoon, so 
up at points on the middle of that race, I think probably back down again as they were rounding the top mark, not quite as windy, um, but still a little bit windier than what we saw in the middle of the last downwind. Do you know what's ironic, I think, is that this is the kind of venue that both Vasco and uh, Terry would love. So, uh, so difficult, so challenging. A real heads out of the boat's, uh, boat place. However, all credit to uh, the Azura team with that lead, 160, 165 metres. The spread at the front of the fleet. A little bit more this time. And the top two teams last year, first and second, of the championship line seventh and eighth in this race. As you said, Jenny Platoon doing a penalty on the approach to the windward mark, first time up. you guy who's in charge of trimming the head sail presumably the uh, spinnaker jenniker on a downwind and does he use a winch um bloody good if he didn't yeah he would well if you yeah head sail if you're talking about yeah, the a sail yeah, then yeah that's the, the downwind trimmer uh, our upwind trimmer does the stay sail if that's what you're talking about he doesn't have a winch but he has two ratchet blocks right uh, one way ratchet block so he can hold it on that uh, but interesting enough this season or on these boats that most of the stay sails are actually fully adjustable in that we can up down in out the stay sail car which in the past hasn't really been done before uh yeah so so the advantage of that is well just to make sure it's in the slot and the yeah, sail's yeah. perfectly set you know we're looking for every little detail of trim that we can possibly get and what's the range for the stay sail um, I think it's about eight and a half knots through to about 16, 17 when they'll start leave the jib up. Uh -huh. And then obviously if they leave the jib up, that's a whole other set of rules and there's a downwind jib sheet run to the back of the boat and uh -huh. all kinds of other mechanics have to go on with, with trimming that because obviously the forward um, two primary winches are used for yeah. grinding the um, A-sail, the Jenica. And so you don't have a sheet winch for the uh, for the good one. It's a good question in the end. Keep them coming for us. Plenty of experts around here. And a few has been. <laughs> <laughs> Present company. Myself. Yeah. <laughs> Not at all. But some great images today. You know. You, just reminds you why this class is in such rude health. Think still, the, uh, still the class of preference for the top pros, isn't it? For sure. Yeah, everybody wants to be here. I think you know, that also that's a little bit of a, you know, we were talking about the confidence, the whole thing. You, know, you don't want to walk away from this regatta with a bad result if you want other yeah. top line pros either. I mean, this, is a, this is a class that you can seriously brag about. But this one in your CV. Pretty brave of Provetzo, I think, to go, you know, take the initiate the drive so early. That hopefully there's a, they're in a good band of pressure and feel strong about it. You know, you almost wonder if maybe they were looking. Yeah. How does that work? Far, can you? All kinds of stuff, wasn't in this fleet? Yeah, prior to the race, yeah, for sure, yeah. Well, and during the race, but. It's it's very quickly uh, changing of jackets and chase boats and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be stamped on that fairly quickly. Yeah, it's interesting. The chase boats can see, you know, with the Wi-Fi, all the numbers on board the boats, and can see exactly what's going on. But uh -huh. Obviously, the boats can't see anything that the chase boats saying. But you crunch all that da data. Yeah, very much so, yeah. yeah. So who does that for you? Um, uh, we yeah. have Nihal back in the... And she's not here at the moment, but he's back in Palm, I think, working out for us as a yeah. sales designer. Very good at running the numbers for us. 
And then it's obviously important for the uh, tacticians to pick the numbers that they want to look at or the incidents that they want to look at. You, know, you can have so much data that it's difficult to actually focus. Well, I think that was right. James Lyons said they, they analysed over a million data points from uh, from the day. We've sat in and I've sat in a couple of the uh, quantum debriefs. It's just extraordinary. You know, there's no hiding place for the helms and the speed teams, you know. And they say, well, well we're quick then. James would be turning around and say, no, you weren't. Look at this. Da, da, da. And I think nowadays as well, we also onboard camera and onboard sound, which we keep to, for ourselves. Yeah. And that's used in the debrief. So, there's, you know, the, you can't hide anymore. If, if from a trimming point of view, you know, you, you can listen to the conversation prior to the incident. And you, know, you can find out, work out what everybody's thinking. You can't hide behind anything. It's, uh, yeah. it's a great tool. It's, you know, honestly, you have to be honest. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. I mean, that was, uh, you know, I was speaking to Jordi Califat before this regatta or something else, and he was saying that is one of the things, that, or the two things that they primarily have as a team is that they're very honest. They shoulder accept blame, or, you know, if something goes wrong, then they accept it and move on from it very quickly. And they, they debrief quickly and simply. And the uh, discussions don't go on long into the evening. They move on very quickly, and uh, I think that's one of their strengths as a team. But then they have been together, as you say, for five five years. Very small changes from time to time. Yeah, it's difficult, isn't it, to um, focus on everything? You know, from the crew work to the speed to the tactics. You know, you've got to pick the right yeah. subject to talk about. And pick your battles. Yeah. Pick your uh, arguments. It was, uh, yeah, so that's good where the coach boat can see all the information coming off the boat the whole time, so he's got a fair idea about what they're going to want to know. Well, that's a pretty big lead, isn't it, Jenny? 325 metres. Um, too big to lose by the end of the finish line here. I mean, they're only 10 boat lengths away. It's probably been too big to lose since the, the second downwind, but they are closer to the finish than they are to the teams behind them, which is going to be making those guys excited. I don't actually know where that will put them overall on the leaderboard, Andy. I know that they were um, close to Fernanesek earlier, but with Fernanesek falling back, this might then put them back into first. There's I'll let points, you guys do the three math. Three points between them, but uh, the uh, where would you have Fernanesek on the leaderboard now? Third. Oof. Third. So. Third. Yeah, Prevetsa in between. So it doesn't quite do it, I think. No, I think Azura would be leading. Everybody Three getting involved with the jibe in there. It's interesting them. to watch the crew work in, on each different boat. There, I see Bruno, the navigator there on Azura. He's, he's doing the late or holding the boom for the late main jibe and helping out the staysail fell. So it's coming from the back of the boat. Uh huh. Interesting to see the way the different teams manage the different, different jobs. A lot of it's about having the big guys on the grinder so that they can pull the sheet round quick enough. Well, and this is finally breaking the the five races, five different teams. This is now the first team to win a race twice. So Azura, and if you're saying, Andy, that takes them into the lead overall, then well done to Azura. Sixth race of the regatta, um, now taking over the lead. I'm taking the, the first second bullet of the regatta for the week and it is still a long period of time behind them to to your team guys so we could uh talk about azura for a second there but i think we mentioned it earlier santiago longe finally finding his feet with this team and and they've done well in this regatta so far but we know such a good team having won the the season three times previously okay behind the battle is very tight uh phoenix just taking the stern of Prevetza, heating up actually phoenix just jibing in front of it on top of sled but it looks like Prevetza has this second place i think phoenix might be coming in into third here i think phoenix will maybe just be able to roll over sled maybe sled is going to be holding off um for second or third but uh Prevetza crossing the line into second the battle behind is between three boats we had thought that brennanasek was in third but i think brennanasek might be the odd man out here it does look like phoenix has just rolled over the top of sled phoenix then grabbing third on this final downwind sled i think grabbing fourth but that is a really difficult call with the white boat on the inside here and the blue boat on the outside with brennanasek so oh no matter what, that puts Azura well into first place with Brunanisek deep there. Behind them, even still close with Azura and Quantum. And actually, you can hear Quantum yelling 
at Azura at the moment, yelling for room, but uh, a little too little too late there for Quantum Racing. And then Platoon, while they had caught up at some point and gotten ahead of Quantum, uh, they've dropped back to last place here. Home Roller Spur not going to be happy uh, with, a, with the final eighth place, but a really tight battle from second to eighth, you guys. Indeed. But uh, who'd have thought then the uh, place is changing down that final run? Brennanisek looking good at one point, but uh, ending up, I think, with fifth. All to the good do of Azura, I think, coming out with 16 points. Sorry, 18, 19 points for them. They should be leading the better. When I set one point behind on 20. So there's the uh, finishing order. First, Azura, Provetsa, Phoenix 11. Great result for them. Sled get fourth. But in a sec, I think we're third down the uh, fourth down the final run. Got up to third, definitely in virtual, and then dropping to fifth. And so the uh, regatta standings, as we said, Azura, 19 points. Brenner sec second on 20 points. Provetsa up to third on 23. Sled fourth on 25. 26 for Platoon. Allegra 32. Quantum Racing 34. And Phoenix 11 on 37. So two uh, very good races today. Great conditions. And as uh, Kenny was saying, Guy, Azura, the first team to uh, win two races here. Yeah, very well done to them. What a, what a great race. Rich get richer in that race, but they definitely looked like they were sailing a very clean race. And poor um, Platoon there. Yeah, I mean, they I mean, what a change. Yeah, and uh, well, that was down, well, they, they were not good anyway going up that beat. No, but they've got a fast boat. You know, they've got a fast boat, quick. absolutely. I mean, they were, going, they were going reasonably well up the beat, but then they had that penalty at the top mark, and uh, it was one of the things that they have said repeatedly in the uh, pre-season and uh, even after Mahon they were saying avoid penalties penalties are what cost them so much so that's it uh, from uh, to Sherry for the day, two great races over the midway point, Azura leading join us again tomorrow live at the Royal Cup in Puerto Sherry